Okay, so the countdown is on. Uh, in nearly six weeks, less than six weeks, kids will be back in school. But the province's back-to-school plan has yet to be released. The minister is going to be coming out uh, early next week and, and rolling out that plan. It's a very comprehensive plan and uh, making sure that we increase the, the protocols to make sure the two million kids that are going back to school are going to be safe. And that was Premier Ford a couple days ago. And this comes as some parents, including those in Peel region, have already had to make the call whether or not their kids will be sending, will be going back to school for in-person learning without that plan in place. Ontario's NDP education critic Merritt Stiles joins me now as we look ahead. Good morning to you. Good morning. Great to be here. Thank you so much for joining. And as noted, a lot of parents right now are sitting with an email in their inbox that says, what do you want to do with your children? Are they going back in person or do you want to go remote? Difficult decision to make when you don't have all of the information. And I should note that are, there are a lot of parents and students on that modified school year who are already going back next week. So first of all, this announcement, which is supposed to happen next week, what do you anticipate is going to be released? Well, I mean, it's really anyone's guess. I, I, I think the really unfortunate part about it is that we're now like five weeks out from, as you said, most students going back to school. Most education workers are starting to think about, like teachers are starting to think about their lesson plans and school boards have already put in place the measures. So it's, I'm really worried that what, whatever they do next week um, won't be enough because we, we so far have not seen uh, enough measures in place. Uh, I hope that they they are willing to do the hard work over the next five weeks to really um, improve ventilation, for example, in our schools. And I'm also hoping that they're they're going to talk about a proactive uh, vaccination plan for those kids who or and workers who are eligible for vaccines but still don't have it. Because we're really we're really tight now. We're actually kind of past the point uh, where everybody could possibly have those those double doses. And we need to have a plan in place to make sure as many people who are eligible as possible are fully vaccinated by September. Would you like to see this somehow mandated? You know, what we would like to see right now, and I've been talking to lots of people across across the province about this, but I think the most important step right now is to just remove the barriers. And what we haven't seen from the government, and our leader, Andrea Horvath, has been talking about this, is that kind of final push plan to really drive it home for families. Um, you know, we should be reaching out to all those families, and we should be making sure that it's part of the, the way, you know, the way we register our, our kids at the school year, when we have to say they've had their measles and their chicken pox mm -hmm. shots. We need to do the same thing for for COVID. You mentioned ventilation. So, okay, within five weeks time, what to your knowledge has already been done and what can actually be done within such a short time frame? Mm -hmm. Well, right now it's a patchwork across the province uh, from what anybody can tell. Uh, and the other thing that's really, I think, concerning is that it's not transparent. There's no reporting publicly, so we don't actually know. So some boards, bigger boards, have done being able to put a HEPA filter or deal with some of the air filtration issues in their, in their, in their buildings. Um, but right now, we don't have necessarily the same number of air changes that are being required uh, by a lot of the experts. And, and that's concerning to me because the government's going to come out and they're going to say, oh, we've spent all this money on ventilation already but we don't see the results of that and we don't know and parents won't know whether or not that's happening in every classroom uh, that their children are in across the province and it's going to be so important like really important for those kids who are not eligible for vaccines especially those under 12s mm -hmm. um, the one piece of information that we heard was from dr kieran moore talking about uh, that that it might be treated those who are vaccinated versus unvaccinated when it comes to uh self-isolation that's the only piece of information we have at the moment um what is your big push here right now because in an ideal world a sm smaller class sizes would be great changing of all the ventilations upgrading that would be great um testing and vaccinations that would all be great uh, but realistically all of that's likely not to happen so what is the number one priority for you that you want to see right at the top of that list for that plan? Um, well, I think that we have to, um, you know, I'll say, first of all, I need to say, 
we are, it is appalling that we don't have a plan in place across this province, that boards have had to make this up on their own. It's, it's appalling. And it's appalling that we as parents have had like, you know, to make these decisions before we know the details. So that's, that's the first thing I want to say. Um, but the other thing that's really, really important right now is that push to improve ventilation and to keep the class sizes small. I know it seems impossible because we've had a government that's for almost two years now, a year and a half, have not met these measures, um, but they're critical. But I think the big thing that they have to really focus on over the next few weeks is that final push on vaccination. Um, it's, it is, again, going to be critical. And I hear from families and um, from education workers across the province who are having a really hard time still getting that second dose. So we need to be out there doing that work and it's critical. And, and I think we also need to set the bar a little higher. We need to expect more from this government. They can do it. It's just the only thing that's lacking right now is the will. Okay, we'll see what happens next week. Education critic Merritt Stiles, we appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, and we should note that uh, we have extended the invitation to the Education Minister, Stephen Lecce, to join us here on Breakfast Television. We have yet to hear back on any confirmation on that. But as soon as we hear a plan, we're going to get that to you and try to get you as much information as we can. Right now, though, we are checking in with Frankie 